Hi, welcome to New Moo Math. Today we're going to learn about dot plots. So a dot plot is a frequency plot, and frequency just means how many times something occurs. So a frequency plot that shows the number of times a response occurs in a data set, where each data value is represented by a dot. So here is a dot plot. Let's read the title to see what the dots represent. The dots represent homeroom students' absences for the year. So on the bottom, we have a scale. It's running one to nine. Notice that there's a one, a three, a five, a seven, and a nine. So in between, there mu that must represent two, four, six, and eight. Each dot represents one student. So, for example, there were five absences. Uh, we have two students right here that missed five days of school. We have one student that has missed four days of school. And this represents a homeroom class. So let's try to answer the questions. How many students missed only one day of school? So on the bottom, these represent days. So we're going to look at one day. So how many students? We have one, two, three, four, five, six dots. So we have six students who have missed only one day of school. Now, let's read the second question. How many students miss more than four days? So more than four would mean five, six, seven, eight, nine, anything more than four. So let's look at that data. That would separate our data right here. So how many students miss more than four days? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve students who have missed more than four days. Now, let's read the last question. Were there more students who missed one day or seven or more days? So we need to compare how many students missed one day versus seven or more days. Okay, so let's compare that. Well, we've already counted the students that missed one day, and that was six students. So we have six students here that missed only one day of school. Now let's look at seven or more. So seven or more really just represents seven and eight. So how many students miss seven and eight days of school? And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight students that have missed seven or more days of school. And that's how you read your dot plot. So were there more students who missed one day or more students who missed seven or more days? And the answer would be seven or more days. Oops, days of school. There were more students because there were eight. Okay, now we're going to look at constructing a dot plot. So let's read our information and we're going to create that dot plot. The following data represents the amount of money each student spent at the school store on Monday morning. Construct a dot plot for the data. So we have, let's count up how many students must have come to the store. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We have 15 different values. So we had 15 students come to the store on Monday morning. Now, they spent between what amount of money? 
Well, the smallest amount of money is a dollar. And then if you look through the list, the largest amount of money was $5. So what I've got to do is on my scale for my dot plot, I have to write a scale 1 through 5. So I'm going to make a point at $1, then at $2, then at $3, and $4, and $5. So I'm going to make those marks, and then I'm going to label them. First is $1, the second will be $2, and this only has five points, so it's okay. Like the last problem, there were one through eight, which were quite a few, so we only marked them one, three, five, seven, and we read between the lines, and we read that the center one was e the even number, but this one we only have five data values. So it should be pretty easy to put all five of those data values along the x-axis. So four dollars and then the last one will be five dollars. There's no real rule of thumb for the scale. You just have to look at what makes sense. Okay, now I've got to make, take and put a dot for each one of these values, and we're going to stack them up evenly. So the first student spent $1, so that represents my first student. The second student right here, she spent, or he spent, we don't know, $5. So I'm going to put a dot for that student. The third student spent $3. The fourth student also spent $3. So now I'm just going to stack it right on top. The next student spent two. Now notice I'm trying to line these up so the first ones are all even. The next student spent one dollar. The next student spent three. And then I'm going to try to line that up nicely. And then four dollars, our first student, student who spent four. And then another four. They might have come together and bought the same thing. And then this student spent two. This student spent four. The next student spent three dollars. The next student spent four. The next student spent two. And the last student spent three dollars. Okay, so now we can answer some questions about the dot plot we just created. How many students spent less than $4? So I'm going to draw a little line. Here is less than everything to the left of $4. How many students spent less than $4? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the answer would be 10 students spent less than $4. What is the mode? Hmm. Well, the mode is very easy with a dot plot. A mode is the most occurring data point. Well, because it's a dot plot, we can literally look at which one's the tallest one. And in this case, our tallest column of dots is $3. So, what is the mode? The mode would be $3. And there you go. That's how you read, or how, that's how you construct a dot plot, and then you can use your dot plot to interpret and answer questions. I hope this video has been helpful on learning how to read and construct dot plots.